This work of social documentary began more than a decade ago. It was in 1997 that Rehan Jamil, who'd grown up in the area, decided he wanted to make a photographic record of life in and around the East London Mosque. Especially since the 1960s, the Muslim community in Tower Hamlets has grown, and Jamil wanted to reflect this in the activities linked to its religious and social core, the mosque. It's to show Muslims and non-Muslims uh, what goes on inside a mosque, what goes on inside Muslim people's homes, uh, where they work, uh, what they do, what, what subjects young people are studying. Uh, it just looks a very basic life um, to show Muslims are just like non-Muslims, Christians. They do the same things, they've got bills to pay, uh, they just want to get on with life really. The mosque itself is relatively new, built a couple of decades ago. From there, Rehan's curiosity took him further afield, seeking to portray life in Tower Hamlets in all its reality. Initially the project um, was just what goes on inside the mosque, uh, but then the mosque's activities grew rapidly with the, with the purchase of the land and then there was loads of external projects going on, uh, fundraising activities, uh, there was, during, during the sort of early 90s, there was a bit of a heroin epidemic in the area and there was a lot of projects um, to deal with the uh, drugs and getting rid of the, the drugs in the area. Um, so yeah, I concentrated uh, sort of towards the end of uh, the 90s on, on, on the community, the wider community. Read any history of immigration to Britain and you come across frequent references to the East End of London. It's where Huguenots, often refugees from religious persecution in mainland Europe, settled in the 17th century, bringing with them skills in weaving that were also handed down to others in the area. Irish immigrants followed in the 18th, and from the 19th century, the area was home to a thriving Jewish culture. In the second half of the 20th century, the Bangladeshi community grew. Rehan has also worked on a project to document Londoners' relationship with the River Thames. The director of this project also lives in Tower Hamlets. I mean, there's sort of small changes that you can see that happen. For example, the shops that are around here, uh, they used to be places where people used to sew. Um, you know, there were sort of workshops. Now they're full of boxes and they were uh, largely Bengali and now they're changing to Chinese. So there are these sort of subtle so you can imagine sort of buildings full of people working, now buildings full of boxes, and now people from China working in those um, spaces that were different, which uh, Huguenots before did, or, and Jews, so it's changed. It's this constant shifting, it's not so sort of dramatic, there's no kind of end point, it's just, it's very subtle changes. No community can live removed from events in the rest of society and the world. The attacks of 9-11 in New York and 7-7 in London brought some stark questions into focus. They included how Muslims were perceived by their fellow citizens and how they saw themselves. This process was taking place as the local community also changed in social and economic terms with the natural passage of generations. These changes have certainly changed the way people behave and live. And at the same time, I think when we look at the religious element of things as well, you've got a lot more people coming closer to the religion. And as they come closer to the religion, you've got a lot of young people coming in. So I think for the last five to ten years, this change is certainly something that is quite stark. And I think, you know, I, I even draw to the, to, to, to the incident of 9-11 uh, and 7-7. Uh, I mean, the, um, you know, those incidents have changed the global context. But at the same time, it's also attracted a lot of people to actually come in uh, to the mosque as well, to find out about the religion, to find out about their identity, explore those things. And I think the Ray House Project has managed to sort of like capture some of those emotions, some of the changes that people have been going through. Another aspect of Rehan's work is his involvement with the charity Muslim Aid. Their office is next to the mosque, and the fundraising manager Issa Abdul Jalil has known Rehan since school days. The sight of Rehan with his cameras at work in the mosque and the surrounding area is a familiar one these days. 
Its quality has been recognized, not least in the shape of a Leaders for London Millennium Award for a book he produced entitled Common Ground, Portraits of Tower Hamlets 10 years ago. But when he began, as a teenager taking photos for a local newspaper, the East End Enterprise, he had some explaining to do. It is cool, actually. It's a very cool shot. Mm. It wasn't hostility, it was just um, curiousness um, and why, why, why would a Muslim be taking pictures in a mosque um, and, and more to do with the fact it was coming from the older generation, not the younger. Uh, and it's probably because they didn't understand what I was doing. Uh, they didn't understand why I wanted to take pictures in the bathrooms of the mosque, uh, shoe racks. They didn't understand that to people who, who are not Muslims it's all new to them. They don't understand you take your shoes off when you go inside a mosque, you have to wash before prayers. So uh, it's, it's the very simple things which to Muslims are like, why are you doing that? Uh, to everyone else is really quite fascinating. It's a common response from those who have commissioned Rehan that they are attracted to his ability to capture the essence of an individual or a group. He has worked with Muslim Aid on various projects in Britain, but they are now discussing an assignment which would certainly call upon all his skills. Indeed, his career so far might well be seen as building up to this. One of the things that me and Ray have been in discussion with very recently is about documenting our work in Iraq. And you know that Iraq is a very difficult, very challenging place to go. Um, and you, you, it's not possible to send any old photographer there. He needs to have someone who's going to understand the culture and be able to be sensitive towards the people when taking pictures, especially at people who may not be used to having a camera poked in their face. Um, so that's a project that we're, dis we're discussing at the moment and we're trying to put together the plans for. Another to work with Rayhan in recent years is Michael Clare. He works for Southwark Council in South London. The borough is culturally highly diverse. Among its quarter of a million inhabitants, 250 languages are spoken. Michael's role is as a community cohesion coordinator. That means his job is to help other people feel part of the wider community in the area, creating links across cultures. He chose Rayhan as a photographer for the project Piece by Piece presenting portraits of Muslims living in the borough of Southwark. I think he captures the essence of people in a way that's crystal clear, if you like. Um, it's also about capturing people as they are at the same time. There's nothing cosmetic about his work. And that was one of the reasons why we chose to work with him as opposed to anybody else. And I think there's also the strength that he has of being naturally interested, if not fascinated, by people and profiles of people. And that's what, in my experience, he's brought to bear on, on the work that we've done together. A journey which has taken Rehan Jamil a good ten years may be nearing its end. He may decide to bring to a close his study of life in and around the East London Mosque. On the other hand, I'm sure that the potential for such work will never cease. It's quite apparent now during um, prayer times you'll see uh, Somali community rapidly growing in this area, North Africans um, and also the city folk are moving in. So, so there's, there's three new communities moving into this area. Um, so it changes all the time. Whatever Rehan Jamil does in the future, his photographs of the Muslim community in this part of East London form an important historical record. Not least, they contribute to present and future understanding of how our community continually adapts and changes shape.